people are logging on. Okay. We'll just give it a few, another few more minutes. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Global Education's Virtual Expo. This evening, our partner is, um, our university partner is Mattel from the University of Bristol. He will be explaining more about the university and what it's like to be a student at the University of Bristol. I'm gonna hand over to my boss, Lisa Manusi. She is the founder of Global Education and she'll talk a bit more about what Global Education does. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Um, it's, I'm proud to say that I'm here to um, introduce you to Global Education. We're an agency that represents colleges and universities overseas, and one of our partners tonight is University of Bristol. Our purpose um, is to be the, the uh, middle between yourselves and Bristol when you're making your application. We assist with your UCAS, your uh, personal statements. We don't write those personal statements for you, but we certainly assist you and help you through the process. Um, after you receive your place, we then assist with all the visas necessary for you to go. Um, so we're a one-stop shop and we're very proud to say that we're a partner um, with the University of Bristol. So please feel free to put in your questions um, tonight after uh, the presentation and we're happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, over to Mattel. That's great. Thank you very much, Lisa. Okay, I'm just going to try to share my screen. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see that. Yeah, all good, we can okay. see it perfectly. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much everyone for joining. My name is Matteo Becaria and I work as an international recruitment officer for Africa at the University of Bristol. Uh, today we have quite a few slides to get through and I will hope to finish with plenty of time for everyone to answer quest uh, ask questions and answer questions, so please do use the Q&A function um, to answer, to ask any questions you would like. Um, we're going to go through all the, all the topics you can see here in the agenda. And um, so please do, as I'm going through, do, do use the Q&A function again to ask anything you'd like me to address today. I'd like to start today with um, talking about the rankings and reputation of the university. We are in the top 10 in UK universities. We are um, within the top 60 worldwide and uh, fourth most, most targeted university by top UK employers, according to High Flyers 2020. We have 27,000 students, uh, around, around about 20,000 of which are undergraduates and 7,000 postgrads. Uh, we have links to 13 Nobel Prize winners, and uh, we have over 150 nationalities studying with us. And uh, 35 of the subjects that we offer are in the world's top 100. Um, according to QS World University Rankings uh, 2020. So we are fifth, joint fifth in the UK for research. And um, this is something that we are very proud of. We're a very research intensive university. So coming to study at the university, you'll be able to work particularly um, at undergraduate level, but particularly for postgraduate students, uh, very closely with, uh, with people who are really at the cutting edge of, uh, of their field. Some of the subjects that we offer in the top rankings, you can see here. So for engineering, that is uh, second, uh, second best in the UK. For veterinary science, we're third best in the UK. Civil engineering, top five. Um, philosophy, eighth. 
etc. So the entirety of these rankings can be found uh, via our website and uh, also via the complete university guides um, .co uk. In terms of the city of Bristol, as you can see here, the photo of Park Street and uh, Bristol Cathedral at night. Um, we've been voted one of the best places to live outside of London, a European green capital in 2015. The city itself has a really strong reputation for having a high standard of living and a general for your way of life. It's not always translated as strongly outside of the UK, as many students have not heard of Bristol before looking up, up where to study. Um, so these are some of the uh, things to kind of explain how uh, the, those different dimensions that are difficult to maybe you haven't heard of uh, before and different things to consider when thinking about where to study. So the metrics in terms of best place to live outside of London looked at things such as availability of public transport, how easy it is to get online, the cost of living and found that Bristol was a really good place for younger people uh, to live outside of London. In terms of kind of city, they, they ask questions such as how likely are you to do a good deed? How friendly are you, uh, are the people around you? And uh, it's something that uh, Bristol came up again uh, as kind of city in the country. And uh, uh, it's, it's very apparent when you, when you uh, walk around, people will just uh, ask you questions or be quite happy to be engaged in, in conversation and, uh, and, and they're quite chatty and uh, generally, generally quite a happy uh, bunch. And another accolades, uh, as I mentioned, European Green Capital in 2015. And um, this is because we do take our environmental issues very seriously. And uh, for example, Greta Thunberg delivered a speech in uh, the center, so College Green in 2019. This is a couple of photos from around Bristol. So the historic King Street uh, is the biggest photo you can see there. Uh, some photos from uh, autumn season around the harbour side and uh, Queen's, uh, Queen's Square there on the left hand side, which is a fantastic place to um, hang out in the summer uh, and enjoy the sunshine. This is uh, another one of the hidden parks. There are many, many hidden parks and bits of nature dotted around the city. As you can see, there are one of our students saying how much they love the parks and hanging out in, in the spaces around Bristol, very relaxing. So in terms of where we are um, located, uh, this is obviously the map of, uh, map of the UK and uh, where we are compared to the main cities is Bristol is uh, due west of London and very close to Wales, so Cardiff being the capital of Wales. We are the largest city in, in the region in the UK called the Southwest, so it's a very beautiful area where many people from the UK and also abroad come on holiday. Uh, we're about an hour 20 minutes from London or less if you've flown in from Heathrow Airport. In terms of student life in Bristol, it's uh, very varied. There are lots of events and festivals. So um, everything from world-class concert venues and historic theatres, such as the Bristol Old Vic. And um, we have the largest uh, street art festival, um, Upfest. As you may know, uh, the most famous uh, street artist, Banksy, is obviously from Bristol. The um, shopping, it's not something that I'm particularly um, interested in, but I know many people are, and so there are plenty of opportunities to do shopping, be it Cabot Circus, which is a very modern uh, shopping centre right in the centre, uh, and also the older shops in the historic Clifton Village and White Ladies Road. And then the restaurants and cafes, which is something I'm a lot more interested in, as I'm, a, I'm quite a foodie, and you can find all sorts of specialities from Italian food uh, all the way to um, global, global cuisine. Uh, so really there are all sorts of restaurants and food supermarkets uh, to buy specialty ingredients and eat um, delicious foods around the city. In terms of what we're doing at the moment and how you can interact with us, we're doing a lot of uh, online events, obviously, as we're unable to travel. And normally I would be uh, speaking to you face to face, but uh, as you can see, it's all, it's all via Zoom these days. So if you want to find out more about course uh, and subject specific webinars, we are running um, uh, what's known as uh, what we're calling virtual Bristol uh, throughout the whole month of March. And there you will be able to find out a lot more about courses and subjects and what it's like uh, to be a student. And um, you can sign up for all sorts of things such as virtual tours and um, talks by the academics for your particular subject. So 
Um, if I can encourage you to do one thing today, it's to have a look at the bristol.ac.uk forward slash virtual hyphen Bristol page, and uh, you can have a, have a look at everything that we're offering there. These are a few pictures of the buildings around our um, campus, the Fry building being a particularly beautiful one, the School of Mathematics. The Langford campus there is where the veterinary school is based, and that's about 20 minutes to half an hour drive um, outside of town, because obviously it's in a more um, countryside-y location and uh, than the, the, the rest of the campus, which is uh, very much in the center of town. And uh, the life sciences building is one of the one of the more modern and sleek uh, and sleek ones. In terms of research, um, as I mentioned, we are an incredibly research intensive university, and some of these uh, practical applications of research is um, that obviously our research enhances and mentors future generation to impact the world. And what we're doing here in particular is we're leading the fight against coronavirus. Um, this is since 2002, we've been undertaking researches into corona coronaviruses, I think, hopefully that's the plural. Um, so in terms of the SARS-CoV-2, we are leading the analysis of its genome and uh, the search for drugs and vaccines to combat the pandemic and save lives. So, so this, is, this is something that you may be interested in. Uh, you will be interested in looking at all the subjects that are allied to medicine. So. Um, things like biomedical, biochemistry, uh, all sorts of things that are very interesting and relevant in terms of uh, the, current, uh, the current situation. In terms of accommodation, we have a number of uh, buildings and uh, accommodation offers. We have our, in, ba in, in basic terms, uh, we offer 24-hour security in all of our buildings. There are lots of social activities available for all the students. And um, we have 27 residences and uh, we support uh, you to find private accommodation should you um, not wish to live in one of the residences that, uh, that we provide. In terms of the Bristol University residences, as we mentioned, there is pastoral support, which means there is uh, there are usually older um, so postgraduate students, for example, that would be on the um, usually on the floor, or at least in the bit in um, in the unit of the building in which you're based, who are uh, the floor or camp, uh, floor managers. So they they essentially are your point of contact if you have any questions. They obviously um, take care and charge of the the other students that are around there. And then obviously there is uh, university security based uh, in, in, in and around the campus and, uh, and at the buildings. So uh, as we mentioned, 24 hour security and then opportunities to get involved both in um, local sports. And uh, for example, there are table tennis courts in, uh, in some of the, sorry, table tennis tables in some of the accommodations um, uh, in the common rooms and then uh, a lively, lively com communal, communal um, activities for students. Uh, so you can meet other students from all around the world and socialize uh, with them. Obviously this year it's um, slightly different to uh, things and uh, and obviously some of the social elements have been obviously had to be curtailed but obviously we're hoping that um, these restric restrictions will be able to be lifted as soon as possible um, once we have rolled out the, the vaccine and uh, things have returned uh, to, to normal. So here are some pictures as you can see for from our halls of residence, from the historic Wills Hall, which is based around a, a quadrangle, um, a kind of a square, square bit of grass, right, and uh, surrounded by these beautiful old buildings. Um, everything from that type of building to the more modern buildings, such as Orchard Heights, um, uh, that you can see here. A couple of pictures from inside our accommodations, uh, as you can see, fairly modern and sleek. Uh, these are from the East Residential Village and uh, these ones from the West Residential Village, which are the uh, slightly um, more classic buildings you can see, as you can see here. And just to give you an idea of where these are in uh, relation to the town, the centre of the center of Bristol is, is um, in fact, is a bit further down here. There's, uh, I'm not sure you can quite see it, but there's a, there's a river that goes right through the middle of Bristol. And 
This is a large hill, uh, which is the, the central university campus area. And in general, this area here is called Clifton. So the closest accommodations to the campus area are the East Village, the ones in red, then the West Village, uh, also very close to the campus. And that's uh, so the East is probably the closest and close to the center of town if uh, you like a bit of hustle and bustle and uh, you like to be as close as possible to, to lecture halls. Um, the West Village is uh, a lot of that is within Clifton. And so it's um, some of the fanciest uh, area of town. So it's the historically wealthy um, area of the city. And um, the slightly further away accommodation, accommodation is in North Village. And um, while it does take a little bit longer to get into lectures, but many students uh, do cycle or take the bus. The bus is maybe 10 minutes and cycling is maybe 10 or 15. The benefit of being in North Village is that you'll buy this uh, very large and uh, beautiful um, grassy, grassy area um, called the Downs, where you can uh, play football, um, go jogging, do any sorts of social activity. It's a very beautiful area. It overlooks the gorge, uh, which is this um, valley through which, uh, through which the Avon River runs. So it's a very beautiful area to um, socialize with your friends, uh, both in spring and summer in particular. In terms of costs of the accommodation, they can range from self-catered, obviously where you um, cook for yourself, to catered accommodation and uh, everything from £100 per week to a maximum of £260 per week, which would be for a studio and um, catered accommodation. In terms of the application timeline, this is for accommodation again, this is April, May, you'd register for your accommodation and then uh, following on there, the, there, is a, there is a further timeline to follow. What we guarantee is that we will offer accommodation in one of our residences to all first year study students um, who have come to who have come to the UK for the first time as overseas undergraduates. So you must have firmly accepted the offer from the University of Bristol. Uh, as I said, you must be coming to Bristol for the first time and you must be unaccompanied. So without dependent family members, spouses or partners. OK, and that having been said, a slightly more uh, interesting, at least from my perspective, bits uh, the students union. So every Bristol student automatically will be a member of the student union. And uh, that in particular has the international students network. So it brings helps bring students together for socials and campaigns and help find a community in Bristol. And um, you access a membership card that then allows you thousands of discounts uh, across the country. Most interestingly, though, is the sports and societies and all the clubs that are available uh, to you as a member of the Students' Union. So at the university, it's a real fantastic opportunity to not only maintain the, um, the sports and the interests that you're already uh, undertaking, but it's also a really good opportunity to try something new, try everything that you could think of, or maybe just try, or maybe just do already, as, as I said, what to you, what you're already passionate in. So if you're already very much very into rugby, for example, obviously you can play lots of rugby at university, both in intramural level, so against other people uh, within the university. And then if you want to compete further, you can go and compete. Uh, if you're good enough, obviously, to play for the University of Bristol, then you can go and compete against other universities in, uh, in tournaments across the country. And um, so that's the sports um, side of things. So we have over 70 sports clubs, um, as I said, with intramural leagues, then exercise sessions and uh, competitive sports teams. Um, but then also there's, an, there's a the total number of clubs and societies is 400. So um, these could include everything from hobbies, so debating, meditation, uh, something kind of weird and wonderful, such as hot air ballooning, uh, which is a which is the thing that's um, remained remained a hobby locally since the, since the Victorian uh, time here in here in Bristol. Um, to everything from to motorsports society. So, for example, I uh, myself went on uh, go karting and uh, four by fouring and other other fun things as part of the motorsports um, society when I was a student here. 
So really there is everything, there is something for everyone here at the Students' Union. And if there's not a society to support your interests, then the SU will um, support you to set up uh, that said society and to, and to interest other people in, in joining you in, in whatever it is that you want to, that you want to do. So in terms of the spaces, uh, we do have one of the largest students' union buildings in the country. Uh, we have a bar, the Balloon Bar, uh, two theatres, a swimming pool, uh, lots of activity space for student societies as well as study spaces uh, throughout the building. There's a gig venue, which is uh, called the Anson Rooms, and that's been host to some legendary artists, including Ed Sheeran and um, Amy Winehouse. The Students Union offices are based in the Richmond building, and so is our academic advice service, uh, Just Ask. In the centre of campus, you can find our letting service, which is the Bristol SU lettings on Tyndall Avenue. And um, this is a letting service which has never charged agency fees and helps students to find their um, private accommodation um, for when they want to carry on to second year and, uh, and third year uh, living in Bristol. So the Bristol SU living room is also a space in the heart of the campus uh, for students to relax, to meet people and take some time away from work. And um, the building is called Senate House. So we'll be opening two new spaces in the buildings, that's be the Beckford and a new SU bar. Also what we offer are cultural events and um, in particular relating to international students, uh, we offer something that's called the Global Lounge, which is both a service, but will also be a um, physical space that you can go to and get all the supports uh, that you need for these activities that we run. So that what's a global lounge? It's a cultural hub that encourages integration of all students, home and international. Um, our biggest activity at the moment is the language cafe. So we're offering 16 languages so far. It's an informal language learning event where if you know a language and you want to um, teach other people that language or share your knowledge of that language with others, then you can chat uh, with people in a friend, uh, fun and friendly environment over a cup of tea. And if you want to learn a language, likewise, you can just come along to uh, try, and, try and learn uh, a bit of a language at the Language Cafe. We are also offering Travel the World. So essentially, we are hearing from students and staff volunteers about locations across the globe that they, that they come from. And uh, so this is uh, learning about new cultures and local traditions and food. So um, what else can I say about this? There's a lot of opportunity to get involved here. So if you want to volunteer, um, both in terms of a global lounge or leading a language cafe table, there's lots of opportunity to do so. And um, there are currently more than 130, uh, more than 130 volunteers um, that that's worked for the Language Cafe since its launch in November 2019. What we also offer is celebration of, a celebration of cultures. So we celebrate significant dates in the global calendar and collaborate with groups and individuals across the university. So recent events have included Ramadan, uh, Diwali and Day of the Dead. So essentially here it's the opportunity to um, bring elements of your culture that you would that you would celebrate at home and um, introduce them to other people at the university, other students, so your peers and uh, celebrate it with them. And also it's an opportunity obviously to um, learn and share in other people's cultures and celebrations. Okay, so a little bit more about the courses and programs, as I'm sure this will be a, a paramount interest to you uh, now. Uh, as I already mentioned, we do uh, have a very, very sp specific focus on research-led thinking. So we are, uh, what we undertake is innovative research. Um, our Bristol Institute for Learning and Teaching, it promotes the latest in educational innovation and means our academics can deliver the best uh, evidence-based teaching. Uh, what you will learn, um, uh, sorry, you will learn through challenges in enjoyable lectures. Um, seminars, e-learnings, tutorials and practicals with access to high quality resources and facilities. And then you will also learn about our on-campus on climate change initiatives from Green Lab accreditation for the School of Biological Sciences labs to vegware cups in our source cafes. And if you're interested in that, you can look at bristol.ac.uk forward slash green. 
In terms of the study levels, I'm not sure exactly what level our audience is at tonight, but I would imagine the majority would either be obviously undergraduate or postgraduate taught. And so we offer everything from the single or joint honours degrees uh, leading to a bachelor's degrees at undergraduate level to postgraduate degrees. So um, the taught ones would lead to a master's degree uh, or the postgraduate research degrees um, often leading to a, to a doctorate, for example. And we also do offer international foundation program courses. A little bit about our facilities and um, we do have outstanding discipline specific facilities such as the life sciences building. So that's a five story laboratory. It has a five story laboratory wing and a state of the art greenhouse and one of the largest teaching labs in the UK. We have a nine, library, nine libraries offering study spaces. So specialist subject librarians and millions of research and uh, learning uh, research books and learning resources. And then we have obviously the IT service desk, which provides assistance and support, not only with your own devices and with using our internet um, services and our, all, of, all of the services such as virtual library and um, booking, booking your books, uh, books out and accessing uh, all of the digital publications that you can once you arrive uh, and once you register with the university, but also helping you with, uh, with your own devices and uh, and all sorts of uh, support that you might need. Further to this, we also have fantastic sports facilities. So the Coombe Dingle Sports Complex um, has the following facilities. It's a 3G pitch, artificial pitches, cricket, uh, grass pitches for football and rugby, indoor and outdoor tennis courts, uh, lacrosse, netball, cross pitch, netball courts, uh, an Olympic weightlifting room, uh, softball and rounders facilities, and the pavilion, lounge bar, and the meeting rooms. And uh, we also have a university boathouse based in Saltford, uh, which is halfway between uh, Bath and Bristol on the River Avon. So that's a fantastic stretch um, that is really good to row on. And uh, I myself go running, trail running around there quite a lot, but I don't do any, any rowing. But if there are any rowers uh, in with us today, then it's a fantastic um, opportunity to um, carry on rowing and even row uh, competitively, if you would uh, like to do so. So a bit more about our students, as I already mentioned, uh, 27,000 students and around 6,000 international students, and 86% uh, of, of our um, students will be in graduate level jobs or further study within 15 months of graduation. Our student to staff ratio is 13 to 3. And uh, as I already mentioned, we're a very international university with about the students from about 150 countries. And something you'll be very interested to find out more about careers. Uh, we have a fantastic career service um, that do support our students from, uh, from the get go. What we do is we'll help our students find work experience alongside their studies will support them in finding internships and support them in finding the graduate job or starting a business in the UK or abroad. So all of these, all of these, uh, the support is absolutely invaluable in terms of um, jump starting your career and ensuring that you're exposed to and have the highest likelihood of, of success in uh, the very competitive application processes that there are for graduate roles in the UK. As I'm sure you're aware, there's a post-study work visa that has been introduced in the UK, whereby any graduate who finishes a degree in the UK will be able to um, work in the UK at any level for up to two years after completed graduation. And uh, so once, um, once you've, if you would like to work in the UK after you've finished your degree, once you've um, started on this PSW, so post-study work visa, you can then, if you wish to continue working in the UK, you can then um, switch to a skilled visa and then that's a route um, to settlement if that's of, of interest to anyone who's on the call today. Um, further support that we offer, of course, uh, uh, um, a wide range of employer-led events, so careers fairs. We have top, uh, the top, top employers in the UK come to the university at a careers fair and so we'll have a stand and students will be able to go there and speak to uh, the hiring the hiring managers and people who have uh, worked on the graduate program before from, for example, our university or other universities and have gone to employ uh, to be employed at 
uh, these top employers and they will tell you what it's like to work for that employer, what their um, graduate programs are like, the kind of accelerated um, training and promotion opportunities that there are from, from joining these graduate programs. So there really is everything um, that, you, that you might need in order to um, kickstart your, your career. In terms of, I realized that we are, um, I've, uh, I've been talking now for almost half an hour, so I'm going to try and get through the last few slides um, a bit faster. There are lots of um, opportunities for students here. Everything from mentoring within social sciences and law, as you can see, these are all the, all the courses that there are opportunities with. So students uh, can be matched with a professional who's studied their subject and using it in their workplace in a career path that they're interested in. So your mentor can be based either in the UK or overseas. This is um, the mentoring opportunities on this side sit, sit within the faculty team. They're managed by the professional liaison network. And so that's um, mentoring for social sciences and law. And then it's also uh, postgraduate international schemes. So that's generally within the School of Accounting and Finance, Economics and Management. And there are also schemes for MSc students in psychology of education, public policy and policy research and banking regulation and financial stability. Okay, I think I've got the whole list there. Great. And um, postgraduate companies for 2020-2021 include the United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the NHS, UNICEF, uh, Bank of Ireland, Deutsche Bank and the Bank of England. Okay. Then in terms of engineering, if we have any engineers in the house, anyone who's interested in engineering, the industrial mentoring is uh, hugely successful and um, a, fantastic, uh, a fantastic attribute of our um, faculty of engineering. So first year undergraduates are allocated to discipline specific industrial mentor and that mentor then supports their development as future engineers. The, um, as you can see, these are all of the schools in engineering that offer industrial mentoring. These give some of the, um, the employers. So these are the companies that are involved in the industrial mentoring scheme in 2019-2020. And um, as you can see, civil engineering at Arup, for example, um, aerospace, Airbus has, a, has a, and Rolls-Royce, there's a huge industrial cluster. Um, very close to, to Bristol, in fact, and around the Bristol area, which is about uh, high tech aerospace. And um, what else do we have in the area? So, Dyson, you may be aware of uh, the, the Hoover um, company and, uh, and eccentric British billionaire who, who set up this company. They are based in Malmesbury, just, uh, just near here. So, as you can see, there are some really well beaten companies uh, out there who are partnering with our. Um, faculties of engineering to offer these uh, fantastic opportunities and if anyone's considering engineering I really um, I really suggest to in fact it's the next slide so I'll come on to that in a second um, but second year placements and projects so for anyone who's thinking about a graduate um, scheme in your second year you should really be aware of the fact that there's um, an optional placement and um, these are usually very competitive uh, to get into, but um, the placement schemes, the um, summer work experience in your second year of uh, study at university, if you manage to get into one of these and they would usually be, be offered by all top employers, then you'll be, and you do well on them, then you'll be very, very likely to be offered a job um, by, that same, by that same employer once you graduate, assuming you obviously graduate uh, with, a, with, a, with a good score, score and a good degree, which obviously we all, um, assuming and hoping that that you will do. So um, uh, yes, one of the one of the examples would be um, investment banking, for example, um, consultancies, uh, similar or, or similar employers would, uh, would would be offering second year employment, uh, second year placements, and uh, this is something we can really we can really help with. This is what I wanted to speak to speak to you about before. So the year in industry and engineering, and this is available for the students who take engineering. Uh, you can't apply for this course directly, but 
any of the students who are doing really well on there, so towards the top, uh, averaging around, roughly around the first, so it really has to be towards the top of their um, cohort, um, will be able to apply for to work a year in industry and engineering. So this will be part of your degree. During that year, you would be working in industry, you'd be paid a salary. And uh, then after that, you'd be obviously, obviously putting in practice the learnings that you'd um, that you've taken from university, but also um, then be working be working in industry for a year. So once you finish that, then you come back to finish your uh, degree at the University of Bristol. And obviously, having finished that, not only you have an excellent degree uh, under your belt, but also a whole year of work experience. So that uh, that would make that makes the graduates who who graduate having done a year in industry incredibly employable and uh, as you can imagine uh, every every single one of them is is hugely ready and supported and um uh, yes and ready to, to to enter the world of work having done having done a year in industry already okay so well-being and support this is very important to us we really want to make sure that all our students are taken care of when they're here at the university so these are all the list of support services that we do offer our students and i realize i am uh, running maybe a little bit short on time so if you just go onto our website and search for support services and well-being you'll see everything from the fact that we have our own um, health service on site so uh, uh, essentially a gp and health uh, uh, health clinic just for just for students and everything to uh, student well-being and having a personal uh, a personal tutor who would do uh, every every student has a personal tutor that would be your main point of contact for any academic um, support or the questions uh, that you may have. A little um, showcase of uh, a couple of our alumni and what they've really enjoyed um, doing at the university. So just memories that they've had so building confidence and uh, resilience through obviously the learning experience and uh, the, the, the university experience that were being being at uni uh, here at Bristol and um, then obviously the some some stories such as for example it's uh, it's very important to be aware that obviously the transition from home to university can obviously be be stressful but um, for the students, as you can see, the university went out of our way to create a warm and supportive environment that, that made it seamless. So that's what I was talking about, the, um, the well-being and support that is available to, to students. So in terms of applying for the courses, um, if you go on our website again, it's bristol.ic.uk and then it's uh, apply, depending on if you're undergraduate or postgraduate, it's slightly different techniques. Um, but essentially, you will be wanting to look at the course, so explore the subject and the course that interests you, and then look at the course details on our page. And then on uh, each course has obviously its own page on our website. Within that, you can look at the admission statements, and you can look at all the other information on our on our pages. So the typical entry requirements, and if you have any questions about typical entry requirements and how they relate to South African qualifications then you can email me and I'll be happy to answer uh, your specific questions. So generally speaking, for undergraduate applicants, we're looking for NSC grades of seven, six and five will be considered for admissions to our bachelor courses. Um, we require good grades in five subjects, excluding life orientation. And for our most popular subjects, then we will be looking for um, sevens uh, and sixes for, for, um, for entry to those courses, generally speaking. And obviously for postgraduate applicants, then we're looking for um, students who have completed a bachelor with honours uh, that is equivalent to a UK uh, upper second class, so uh, a T1. And if you're interested in PhD study, then that would be applicants who hold a master's degree. We have a host of scholarships available. It's a total of £1.75 million that we will be awarding to the best and brightest international scholars. So if you are a very talented um, scholar, we do offer merit-based scholarships. So we are really looking to um, award the best, uh, the best scholars. So our ThinkBook scholarship is everything from 5,000 to 20,000 pounds per year for the postgraduate programs and 5,000 to 10,000 pounds per year for the undergraduate ones. And there are lots of school-specific scholarships and 
um, other ones that are available through our website. And we have a ded dedicated visa support team which can help with all of the paperwork and visa and um, then obviously we do have a lot more information and support to provide uh, once uh, you're an applicant and once you've obviously received an offer from Bristol and we ensure that you are successfully prepared for travel and um, for everything you need to get to Bristol. So that's it. That's all I really had for today. I hope that I was able to address most of the questions that uh, um, or most of the information that you might have wanted, um, but I'm very happy to take any questions now. Um, I'll just take the opportunity to say, obviously, do email us as well for any more specific things. The email address is international-office at bristol.ac.uk. Perfect. Thank you so much, um, Mattel. Just one moment. I'm just going to Great. quickly Brilliant. share my screen. Thank you for the lovely presentation. It was very informative and showcased your the university really well. So we have received quite a bit of um, quite a few questions. So I'm going to ask them to you now. So um, a student is asking, do you have soccer in your sports club? Yes, absolutely. Although if you call it soccer, then you will be banned forthwith from the, from the UK. As you obviously know, it's called football over here. Yeah, in the UK it's football. But absolutely, <laughs> we are very passionate about um, soccer and lots of us uh, play it. Yeah, all the big clubs are English clubs. Indeed. Okay, then we've got another um, question. Do you offer social work? Social work, that's a great question. I don't think we do, um, but I'm just going to ch double check that on our websites. Um, we have childhood studies as a BSc, um, or childhood studies with management, and obviously the psychology and child psychology, but we don't have um, social work, unfortunately. Okay, perfect, thank you. Then um, we've got a question from Saxon. He's asking, he's currently doing his first year of A-levels. Mm -hmm. He writes his final A-level exams next year, November, 2022. Mm -hmm. when, um, can he, when can he put in his application? Okay, so the application cycle with UCAS, it's a great question. Actually, I should have included more information about that during my pre in my presentation. The application cycle with UCAS um, starts in, um, September and the early deadline. So for the um, Oxbridge applications and for medicine and dentistry and veterinary sciences, the, the deadline is around the 15th of October every year. Um, then there's a second deadline, which is for the majority of applicants for undergraduate studies such as um, Saxon, and that will be um, the middle of January. So the deadline for this year has just expired for the, the students looking to enter in um, in September of this year. So if you're looking for entry in September 2022, then your application dead, deadline, so your the applications would open around September this year. So you've got plenty of time to um, research your university courses, uh, research the universities, and find out you know obviously which of which course you're interested in, and um, and find out all about it. Um, and yes, particularly on um, how to, you know, how to how to make the best applications and uh, put, put your best foot forward to maximise your chances of, uh, of getting as many uh, offers as possible. Perfect. And he's asking um, which intake he's asking, will he start in Jan um, 2023 or September? OK, so we don't actually offer um, January intake ourselves. We only we only do one intake a year and that's in October every year. So um, it's always an autumn. Uh, it's always an autumn intake for us. So the intake. Um, when did he say when did he say he would he's taking his A-levels? Um, he would write his last set of A-levels final exams in November 2022, so early next year. Okay. So then he can apply for okay, October sorry. 2023. Yes, I believe that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Perfect. Saxon, you can also pop um, Global Education an email. Our contact details are on the screen now. We'll assist you with your whole application, the whole UK, your whole UCAS application to um, five um, universities in the UK. We'll assist you with any more questions that you might have. Thank you. I think um, another question is, is medicine offered and what would be the cost of studying medicine? But uh -huh. Great question. Yes, we do offer medicine. Uh, we have a fantastic, um, we have a fantastic medical school. Uh, I'll also be quite frank. It's uh, we, due to the limited number of places in uh, medicine, it's obviously a very, very popular course, and we are one of the best medical schools in uh, in the UK. Um, unfortunately, there are just a limited, a very, very limited number of places for international students. So while there are spaces there, it's extremely competitive. So obviously you're, you're welcome to apply and um, the, all the information is on, our, is on our website. And obviously if you want to be a doctor, there's no getting around, you know, you do have to study medicine. So if you're sure you want to be a doctor, that's great. Um, it's just also good to be, to be realistic about what the chances are of actually getting into medicine at Bristol. They are, relatively low because simply there's a lot more demand than than places for international students um the cost uh, per year for medicine is also um something to consider because it's uh, 35,000 pounds a year so it's one of the most expensive is probably the most expensive course um that we offer um obviously being the fact that you'll be training as a as a doctor and uh, over over a number of years so having said all of this it's also worth considering subjects allied to medicine. So if you're not absolutely certain that you want to be a doctor and want to be a GP, then what happens a lot is that people who, and also people who do apply for medicine and aren't uh, and, and are, and are unsuccessful, um, sometimes will be offered a subject allied to medicine. So a lot of time that will be in the School of Life Sciences, uh, sorry, in the School of, um, yes, that's right, in the School of Life Sciences. So. Um, along the lines of cellular and molecular medicine, um, physiology, pharmacology and neuroscience or school of biochemistry, for example. And um, a lot of these subjects uh, lead to very interesting careers in, for example, maybe medical research or applied medical devices or similar subjects that are, that are around medicine, but it's not, um, it's not the I want to become a doctor sort of thing. So I hope Thank that's, you. I hope that's and now that we're on the uh, medicine topic, there's another question: Biomedical engineering. Mm -hmm. Does the um, University of Bristol offer that? Okay, good question. Bear with me just a moment, and we will find out. Okay, so we have biomedical sciences. I'm not sure we have specifically biomedical engineering. Um, just a moment. Okay, so biomedical courses. No, we only have biomedical sciences and the biomedical sciences course will be, okay, broad background in biochemistry, cell and molecular biology, genetics, immunology. Yeah, so there's not there's not specifically biomedical engineering, um, but no. having having heard that, it might be something that's specialist enough to be at at a postgraduate level. Um, I'm just it's just a conjecture now. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry I can't help any more than that. So I don't think we have a course with that exact yeah. name. No problem. Thanks, Matteo. Um, sure. You can always just put um, oh, global education. Me. Sorry to interrupt you. We have a biomedical engineering. It's an MSc course. So exactly okay. that. Um, so where are we? It is an emerging field in the UK involves applying physical, chemical, mathematical and computer science and engineering principles to analysis of biological, medical, behavioral and health related problems. So Let's have a quick look what the entry requirement is. Okay, so entry requirement is to have an upper class, uh, upper second class honors degree in engineering, so preferably electrical, mechanical, or computer science, or a subject related to biomedical engineering. Okay, 
So how okay. about that's Perfect, great. thank you. And I see we're getting quite a few questions regarding finance. Mm -hmm. um, is it, um, they didn't see it in the subject rankings. Do you um, offer any finance related courses? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a, a whole faculty of, um, a whole faculty of science, uh, sorry, of, of uh, accounting, and, sorry, School of Accounting and Finance. Um, which is uh, which is one of the top ones in in the UK. So of course um, that is that is a very key uh, and a, an important school for us. And uh, in fact, I will am I able to post links into the chat? Okay, maybe I'll just post a link directly. There you go. Bristol.ac.uk forward slash accounting and finance. There's a nice video on the homepage, so you can um, check that out. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we've got quite a few questions coming in. Um, occupational therapy, is it offered at um, University of Bristol? Um, I don't think occup I, occupational therapy. We've got um, physiotherapy, I think. Uh, I managed to print, spell it correctly. Uh, just a moment. So physiological sciences, there we go. So there we go. Okay, so physical physiological science, I believe, is what we what we have. Um, so no, unfortunately, we don't have occupational therapy. Okay, thank you, uh, Matteo. Mm -hmm. Then we've got another question. Um, do you offer any course on astrophysics? And if okay. so, how much would the, how much is that for tuition? Of course. Okay, so we have um, physics with astrophysics as either a three years bachelor course or four years uh, master in science. And the, um, the course fees per year are 24,700 pounds. Perfect. Yeah, that's in British pounds. Thank you. Then we have another um, question regarding engineering. Um, what is the cost of studying electrical engineering? Okay. And is robotics engineering offered? Uh, we have an MSc in robotics, but that's at master's level. And okay, so was it just electrical engineering? Correct. Um, question. Okay. So I think we have um, electrical and electronic engineering, but just bear with me a moment. Okay. So yeah, the robotics. So, so the robotics MSc is only at master's level. Um, the really interesting new robotics course is called aerial robotics and MSc. So if you're interested in, in, in flying stuff, drones, UAVs, that's a new course we've just um, we've just launched, and uh, already in, uh, the interest for that is uh, is is very high. Um, let's have a quick look what the entry requirements are, what the kind of study pathway is towards that. Um, second class honors degree in engineering, physics, maths, or related subjects, and having obviously um, programming skills in C or C plus plus, Java, and Python are highly desirable. Um, but to go back to your the first part of your question, we offer the either a bachelor's in engineering or a master's in engineering in electrical and electronic engineering, and um, the fees for that are also twenty four thousand seven hundred pounds per year. Perfect, thank you. Then um, another question from Saxon. He's asking. Um, he is a homeschooled student mm -hmm. who still has to write his A levels at a CIE centre, would this be any, um, would this be at a disadvantage because he's a homeschool applicant or? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. I don't immediately know the answer. I would imagine that we have, um, obviously, it, it wouldn't probably be the first, the first homeschooled student. And in fact, I, I remember a, um, a fellow student of mine was, was homeschooled. I don't know if you took the, um, the A levels, I think she 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 um, she did so in in the in the United States, but I'm sure we have a system for this. But the best um, thing would be to probably just uh, write us an email. So 
international hyphen office at bristol.ac.uk and then I can get um, someone who actually knows the answer to that question um, rather than my trying to invent an answer here and there. Perfect. Um, I would personally say I don't I wouldn't think it would matter so much because he's still writing his A levels. Exactly. So something along the lines of um, a reference, and then probably if he's writing A levels, there would be some some someone who can provide a you know be his referee. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then we've got another question. Does the um does the University of Bristol offer any postgraduate programs in public relations or corporate communications? Okay, um, that's a good question. Um, I don't think public relations as such. Uh, and I don't think either communications, but um, it's more along what we have is something more along the lines of marketing. Um, so just bear with me a moment. That would be within the School of Management. And then, okay, so postgraduate courses. Let's have a quick. Yes, so along the lines of um, marketing, essentially. So um, I know that uh, communications and marketing are two Fairly, fairly different things. So I'm not going to provide any particular information about uh, the MSc in marketing unless whoever's asked that question is particularly interested. Okay, so it's more marketing degree rather than communications yeah, and PR. We have an MSc in marketing, correct. Uh, we have MSCs in, in management, but we don't specifically do um, communications and PR. Okay, perfect. That um, oh, one more question has just come in. Mm -hmm. How much is the tuition fees for medicine as well as the accommodation? You did okay. mention um, the medical yes, fee. Yes, so the tuition fees for medicine are £35,000 a year. And then the um, accommodation, that will vary. But I do have a headline figure for the fees and finance, so let's have a look. Um, here we go, living expenses. I'll send you that link as well in the chat. So the it says most students spend between 9,000 to 15,000 pounds a year on living expenses, including accommodation. So if you're thinking about budgeting for how much it's gonna cost in total, you obviously need to add your um, tuition fees. Uh, with this uh, um, living expenses, so then it depends on, uh, you know, if you choose the, one of the cheaper accommodations, one of the more expensive accommodations, and then how much you spend on a daily basis on, you know, everything from food to uh, discretionary spending, etc. Um, in general, in general terms, in Bristol, it's a really good quality of life um, compared to the price. So obviously, it's more expensive being here than. Um, cheaper cities in the UK, for example, uh, Manchester or Leeds uh, or places that are more kind of in the north, maybe even places in Scotland will be quite a bit cheaper, Glasgow, for example. Um, but the quality, but the cost of living here is a lot cheaper than London, for example, and um, not having to take the tube everywhere and being able to cycle or walk everywhere within the maximum, maybe half an hour, 40 minutes walk to anything you need to get to in the city is a is a huge advantage because obviously then you're not spending in travel on taxis and and also meals out are also very relatively affordable etc definitely yes mm -hmm. then i'm sorry the same student is asking does that does the scholarship cover accommodation tuition fees okay so the scholarships are always for uh, against the cost of your tuition fees Okay, so there are bursaries as well, which can co which can then cover um, your living expenses. So, in terms of the student finances, uh, a similar link to what I just shared, but I'm just going to share the top level link within there. There's in fact the bursaries and scholarships. So, um, the top, yeah, there's a lot of different links. These are the ones. These are kind of all of the scholarships that are available. And then if you then look, so the scholarships go against your tuition fees. And then if you're looking in terms of cost of living, um, 
you know, uh, support, then uh, what you're looking for is bursaries. Perfect. Thank you, Mata. Then another student is asking, are there any honor, um, honors programs offered or is it do all postgraduate programs begin from a master's level? Okay, that's a good question. Um, uh, all postgraduate programs um, begin from a master's levels level. Um, so the entry requirement for a master's at um, Bristol uh, would be having completed a, a bachelor with honours um, in the South African system, for example, or, at, or in the UK. Um, then there are some very limited um, uh, postgraduate certificates and things like that. But I think in general, in general terms of, uh, of answering this question, I think the answer is you, you should have, you must have finished an honours programme in South Africa or in the UK for, uh, before you applied to a master's programme at Bristol. They could also, you could also do a pre-masters, correct? In order to make up for that honours year to get into a master's program. Um, possibly, I'm not very aware of the pre-masters courses. Uh, is that something you can do in South Africa? Um, through a pathway provider, um, I'm not 100% sure which um, pathway provider represents University of Bristol, but there's Navitas, um, Into, and all those pathway providers that you can do pre-masters and then get streamlined into a master's degree at University of Bristol. But okay, you can that's just... not something I'm uh, I'm aware of, unfortunately. So you probably know more than me. I'll just obviously reiterate the um, the entry uh, requirements. So it's to um, in order to apply for a master's here in Bristol, then you must have completed the equivalent of a bachelor's degree with honours in the South African market. Perfect. Yes, you can just pop um, global education a mail or phone us, and we can elaborate more on pathways providers to University of Bristol. Thank you. Then we have um, a few more questions. Are three or four A levels required for um, entry requirements? Okay, so what course is this? Um, it really depends on, on the course. I think a lot of the courses, um, every course will have a specific entry requirements and um, Looking at the looking at the first one I picked was the BSc Accounting and Finance. It's looking like three A levels, so it's um, the, the the standard A level offers three A's, including mathematics, or A star A B, including A in mathematics. And um, so I think I think the answer to that question is um, is three A levels are required. Um, I'm just picking another random one. Yeah, aerospace engineering, the offer is, you know, A star AA, for example. So I think, yes, three, three A levels are required. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mattel. That seems to be it. And um, there is no more questions coming through. So we've answered everyone. If, um, if anyone still has any further questions that you'd like to ask, you're more than welcome to pop Global Education an email or phone us. You can set up a virtual consultation. They are um, free. You can even, we can put you directly in contact with Mattel. We are the middleman between yourselves and University of Bristol. And thank you so much, Mattel, for the um, lovely presentation very well spoken and very informative thank you it's been a pleasure to uh, join join global education today thank you so much and we look forward to hopefully um putting in some applications to your lovely institution that's fantastic so thank you everyone who joined today and um, i wish you a very pleasant evening and once again please do contact global education for any questions and should you have anything directly from me then you can reach me on international hyphen office at bristol.ac.uk so thank you perfect thank you so much good evening everyone have a good night thank you okay. bye